Well, it's Tuesday, so it's time for some therapy. Time to bring him in my man, Dr. David Child. Come on this way, or this way. Yeah, look at me, I got it right. What up, Dr. David Child? What's on your heart? What's on your head? Well, I love hopping on early here and, and hearing your stuff here. And uh, Jokic was interesting. For, for you, though, for therapy for you, your participation th trophy was in the form of Benjamin. So you're okay, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. They were paying no matter what. Wins or losses. Yeah, you, you're, you're losses. okay there. You got, you got those flat green uh, participations trophies. But yeah, Jokic, Jokic, I get it because ultimately – it's not like he had COVID. He didn't do the vaccine, and we can, you know, political or not. Sure. Is there a more socially distant sport than tennis? I mean, <laughs> golf. To this day, there has not been a single case of COVID transmitted from an opponent to an opponent in the sport of football, rugby, and soccer. To this day. Mm. Remember all the fear when we got into football where, you know, you're laying on each other, tackling and blocking? Because it's prolonged exposure over yeah, 15 yeah. minutes. Tell us, you're not next to an opponent for 15 minutes within six feet in an entire game. It's seconds out, yeah. seconds out, seconds out. It doesn't add up to a cumulative six minutes. But anyways, I digress. I get why Jokic might be upset about – because tennis, you're distanced anyways. But uh, – Anyways, but I, yeah. and I loved your camp stuff. I look at Vic and Steve Young and Lamar Jackson. I don't even put Cam Newton in the same category. He's different. He's the best combination of a fullback quarterback threat as opposed to a dual quarterback threat. That guy ran with so much power and high knees. Yep. I'll tell you a funny story. Before the draft, he was working out in San Diego. He had a small issue, no big deal. He got an MRI of his pelvis. And the radiologist calls me for the reading and says, who is this guy? Basically, is this guy human? I said, well, what do you mean? You know, it's, <laughs> he's a guy athlete. He goes, he has the biggest psoas muscles I've ever seen in my life on MRI. So That's and so what's a big. psoas? First of all, Soas is for hip flexor, so high knees, power running. He said this guy had the biggest psoas muscles he ever seen in his life. Not to get grotesque, but Marcellus, you know what a psoas is? Uh, I do, because my psoas, my ass is so right here, right here by my stomach. <laughs> it's so sore and tight. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> At the steakhouse, it's a filet mignon, but that we digress. Oh, tasty, tasty. Yeah, Cam Newton is a beast, dog. Um, he, he brought up a conversation that he deferred and he gave it the flowers to Lamar Jackson, et cetera, because to your point, he was a different animal and different beast. I'm still mad at Dr. Fauci for all that misinformation. I'm stopping. <laughs> he got Jokovic. He got Jokovic <laughs> all messed up, messed up his rankings and his numbers and his money. Anyway, let's get into Joe Burrow, who wants to make more money by playing more games. He's like, hey, 18 games, two bye weeks, NFL, bring it on. More money for me. What you thinking, Doc? Well, I don't know. When you were playing, would you have wanted 18 games and two bye weeks? I would have taken 20 games, 22 games, because I know the money's coming with it. And the games are easier than practice. So in my NFL, I hated practice. Today's NFL, they don't hate anything. They love practice. It's easier, new CBA. And the games are what you get. You, you don't have to get paid to play the games. It's a fun. So, yeah, I would play a time. I've been saying for a long time, two bye weeks. And it's better for health and it's more money. And it gets you, and how is it more money? It gets you an extra week of TV. The early slot of games on Sunday, you can't watch all eight, 10 games. You spread them out a little more. Then you get an extra Sunday night, extra Monday night, extra Thursday night. Heck, if you pair two teams coming off a bye, you could play Wednesday night football and more revenue is, you know, higher cap and, and all that stuff and better for health. I couldn't figure out why they weren't doing it already, but I think the NFL is very smart. I think they're waiting to get to 18 games before they did it to get to 20. Here's the unintended consequence. People are going to say, well, get rid of preseason. Fine. Preseason is really easy. Preseason games, for especially for vets, right? You barely play. Right. But right. here's the slim, come around unintended consequence, right? Every action has an opposite reaction. 
all the teams are going to do is replace all the preseason games with joint practices. And we yeah. know joint practices are a lot harder and Hell. more serious than <laughs> preseason games. You got ones yeah. going against ones on another team time yeah. and again and again, more plays than in a game. Yeah, I don't like that. Not a fan of joint practices. I mean, literally anxiety or scared. Like, just like, because practice is enough, but you can get into a, a rhythm with your teammate. You can get into a deal with your teammate. The <laughs> other dude, the deal is off. Because he's like, no, I don't trust you. And I like you, but we ain't about to play those games. So, yeah, I think these organizations going to get slick on them right there. Talk to me, Doc, about... The PED use and the standard excuse. We got now to Sean Gibson, who got caught slipping. What's up with this? Anything new? The standard excuse is the dog ate my homework, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. I unknowingly took something. It really wasn't performance enhancing. It wasn't steroids. It was just something that was mixed in and whatever. Here's why yeah. I don't know that it flies. The only excuse that I actually sort of bought is, is a guy you and I both know, Corey Legit, when he said, my trainer injected me with stuff and said it was fine and I didn't know what he injected me for. He actually produced some evidence, right, for it. But when you say, you gotta understand, before you, when you get popped positive, you're notified, your side gets a chance to test the sample, you know exactly what the sample is, and there's a $100,000 fine associated with anyone who knows that information on a team that's not supposed to know. There's only one person on the team that's supposed to know what you tested positive for, the, the agent, the, the drug testing agent, mm -hmm. and it wasn't me. And so the only way the information gets out as to what you took is if the player says it. And the player isn't even saying the substance uh, if they said, look, here is the bottle. I checked it out. I was misled. Okay. But they're saying, oh, it was just something. You know, it, the easiest way to figure out if it is, you bring the, the pills or the bottle into the athletic trainer and say, here, is this okay? Right? I mean, that's what you do. And so I don't know. I'm not hating on him. I don't know what he took, but I don't know that he came clean. And that's kind of the standard with the excuses. So he's going to serve his time. So let him serve his time and move on. Yeah, the only wiggle room I give guys, because as soon as you get busted with PEDs, I'm like, cheater. I don't believe none of it. But I will say this. There's some wiggle room for the guy who's like, someone I trusted, someone I'm working with, working out with, gave me something and told me it was fine. There is a part of me still that wouldn't necessarily go through every pragmatic step and say, here, I'll wait two more days when you tell me that that's clean. There's a part of me that will work out with my boy, and if I see he yoked up and he got muscles, I'm like, what you doing? He said, I'm taking these. He's good. He's cool. I'm saying, you sure? They ain't there was a time I would have done that. So that's the only thing. But now – You're right, but here's, but here's the other thing that, that happens. There was a study once where 20% of the stuff that you – over the counter that says no steroids and whatever has contamination in it with yeah. testosterone or other things. And the reason why is – these companies, okay, we know testosterone and steroids work. So if you put a little in, your product gets good juju out in the streets. Hey, this stuff works and it's legal. And mm -hmm. because of co-packers, a lot of these things are manufactured in the same thing. Same like place. these small yeah. offshoot companies, they don't have their own plants and their own stuff. Right, right. They do it with a co-packer. Okay, here we go doing something that's maybe not be legal. And here comes something that is, quote, supposed to be legal. And there's a little bit of mixture. And how do you know? That's the only time that I think there's an excuse to say, this is what I took. NFL or whoever agency, go test this. And if this has what I have in my body, here's my logical excuse, or at least a lawsuit to this company. But, you know, these companies are typically so small, you sue them, they'll just go out of business and pop up again brand new somewhere else with a different name. That's, I think, a legitimate excuse. But until you name, here's the bottle, here's the bag, here's the pill, here's the whatever I did, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, that trace on that assembly line, obviously contaminate some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Hey, I'm going to something tonight. I'm going to see this Netflix documentary called Receivers. Uh, interested because Netflix does a great job with these documentaries. I love Sprint. 
that is out right now about track and field. So I think they're going to do a good job with this one. The quarterback one was good as well. But Kelsey turned it down. What were your thoughts about Kelsey saying, ah, too much attention. I'm good. I'm not. Do you really think Travis Kelsey turned it down or did his uh, girlfriend turn it down and said, look, I ain't going to be part of this. You know, I, I, I got other things and whatever. So, I mean, yeah, he gets enough attention. It's probably fine. But but it, it might have been Taylor Swift's people that turned it down. And, you know, they, they want to keep things private, which is fine. His prerogative. And, and uh, he's blown up anyways. It would have been fun to see. But, of course, if you're a Netflix executive, let's get – Travis Kelsey oh, yeah. will get Taylor Swift oh, yeah. too, right? But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that didn't work. Dang, I mean, if I'm Taylor Swift, I'm I'm so like overpopular. Like, what does it matter? Like, everywhere she goes, it seems like there's a documentary been filmed of her just in her daily life. So it wouldn't have agitated me if I were her. But hey, I'm not that famous. I don't get it. Uh, Hard Knocks, Giants, they about to be famous. You pumped for that? Yeah, but, you know, on, on the being famous part, you you would do it. Marcellus, as I've said before, you're wired differently than any athlete that I know. A lot of athletes are very friendly to fans, especially kids, when the kids come up to them, right? And yeah, that's yeah, yeah. part of the course. You'd hate an athlete that wasn't friendly. As I've told this story before on the show a while back, I'm walking with you on ESPN Plaza in L.A., and there's little kids there that don't even see you, and you're going up and dapping them up and saying, hey, little fella, hello, how are you, big dog, and being totally friendly kind of thing. Yeah, so baby. I think you're just wired differently. Most people want a little more privacy. You're just like that outgoing guy. So, you know, give you credit for that. But I think that's that's the, the difference there. And the other thing is Taylor Swift has all these documentaries and stuff about her, but she controls them. She probably That's wouldn't be point. controlling what was yeah. happening here in a yep. football one. So, and and the same with the Giants. I, look, I never was part of any hard knocks. Thankfully, I see major problems with it, like in terms of HIPAA and how does a camera in the room not mm. alter what I would say or how a patient would react or player react? And 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 what if you cut it so? it sounds really bad or sounds good or sounds cavalier. like you don't get the whole context. You, you know, you, you, you pick out a line like that's happened to the giants. First of all, obviously the hard knocks off season with the giants has to be shown a lot, lot, lot later. Cause you can't reveal who they're chasing or who they wanted to sign or not wanted to sign like the Saquon thing. But yeah, yeah. what we've seen on hard knocks almost makes the giants look bad. Like they were discarding Saquon. Did you really see the whole story about we really want him, but for these this $12 million, we can get this player, this player, and this player, and it really comes down to this or this, not we don't like Saquon, but you don't really see all of that. So I'm glad I was never part of it. I'm like opposite you. I would hide from attention, and especially medically. You know, there's some sensitive things that, you know, of course you could get a player to sign off on it, but, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm glad I never had to encounter it. But now there's more and more hard knocks all the time. It, it's it's interesting to watch, but you have to understand. I think people need to understand that it's not the complete picture of reality. So don't overreact. Yeah, I, I really just stopped watching them. And I don't think that they got bad. I think I just grew stale on it. Like, they're going to find some unheralded little undrafted rookie, make him a darling. They're going to find some stud that is on the fence. And then it's like, it's like, all right, every team the same after you go through the third episode. It's like, it's just the same beats. I don't know if it's good or not. You still watch it? Is it good? I don't really watch it, but they are trying to do it with the off season one. They had the preseason one, the traditional, and they have an in season one this year. They're doing what all of the AFC East, I guess, teams uh, during the season. I, I, I'm curious how much control each team has to editing. Like, we don't want that out there because we're going to see these guys again, you know, kind of thing right. in season. Uh, I, I mean, if it were me and a team, you know, look, we know teams don't tell the truth. We know every week when the coach goes out there multiple times, he's not given the whole story on injuries. And we understand that. It's coach speak and the way you coach speak. But in your team meetings, look, you know very well, your head coach, what he says on the podium is not what he says to you guys in the team meeting rooms, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but if the team meeting room is going to get exposed, uh, yeah. how how does that work? I, I think it's just fraught with a lot of things, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that you keep in-house, right? I mean, there's a lot of bulletin board material that would happen if the coaches 
speech to the team got released, right? Yeah. Well, Doc, I, I thank you for the flowers. Uh, I am wired different. I think we all are. We're all uniquely the same. So well, I'm different in my own little ways. But I tell you, Doc, one, I really love people, like just on hello, not for like anything else. But two, it's just a camera. I freak out when people were like, uh, I was like, it's a device. Like if a computer walked up to you and it was like, hey, I'm looking at you. Like, are you nervous? It's a camera. Now, behind that camera are millions and millions and billions of people. But who cares? It's just a camera right here. That's why I never, like, change up or get nervous or just be different. It's a camera. Like, if I'm Taylor Swift, like, another camera. Now, the people's opinions that come from what that camera captured is a whole different animal. But I never even go to that place. I'm like, well, whatever. I ain't going to see all them people. Who cares what they really thinking? So that keeps well, me saying. Well, you are wired differently because I still don't love the camera. Like, as I'm sitting here speaking to you, I'm I'm trying to black out the part that I see my own face. I'm looking right at you like we're just having a conversation. <laughs> if I were just looking like a, a red dot or something, it, I, I don't have the ability to just talk to a camera, like, you know, as like yeah. it's a person or whatever. Our conversations work because I'm just like talking to you, you know? talking to me. <laughs> and it happens to be recorded. So that's I how I get away with it. Get it. All right. You got some surgeries. I can't ask you much because that's HIPAA laws, right? But uh, continue success. And we're going to talk next week and um, heal some people in the meantime, Doc. Why don't you? All right, buddy. All right. Take care, brother. That's Dr. David Chow, who has seen me butt naked many times. Pause. Um, just because of surgeries. He, uh, he did my foot. What else did he do? My shoulder. Yeah, did he do my shoulder? Yeah. And another, oh, my abdominal wall. I think he did. Yeah. I don't know. I had too many surgeries. All right, y'all. That'll do it for today's episode of Never Show.